Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue our series on the lives of the saints, and on this, the 31st of March, we celebrate the memory of our Holy Father, Innocent, Metropolitan of Moscow, and Enlightener of Alaska in Siberia. The Apostle of the New World was born in 1797 in a small village in the district of Irkutsk near Serbia, Adopted by his uncle on his father's death, he showed during his studies not only a lively intelligence, but also great skill with things technical, especially clockmaking and woodwork. From his childhood to his last days, he was never without occupation. Raised to the priesthood soon after his marriage, he was was beginning a promising life as a parish priest in Irkutsk when, in 1823, an order came from the Holy Synod to send a missionary to Alaska. This invitation did not, at first, affect Father John, who had never dreamed of becoming involved in distant missions. But when a Russian colonist who had spent all his life in those regions of perpetual autumn spoke of the piety of the Aleutians, and their desire to hear the word of God, his heart was inflamed with apostolic zeal, and he decided to leave for America with his all his family. After a journey of 14 months across Siberia, they arrived on the island of Unalaska, where they found only a tumble-down and dis- disused chapel. Although a number of the inhabitants had received baptism from the missionaries of the preceding generation, most of them, through lack of pastors, living in ignorance of the elementary truths of the gospel and in moral degradation, Father John undertook, first of all, the building of a church with his own hands, with the help of local men to whom he taught construction techniques together with the catechism. Patient and showing fatherly love in his contacts with the Aleutians, the new missionaries learned their language with an amazing speed and began without delay to translate liturgical texts and passages of the gospel that are read in church. He covered great distances, going from island to island on a fragile craft, preaching, baptizing, and making rich and precise observations on the flora and fauna and the customs of the inhabitants of these regions, which were still, for the most part, unexplored. During the first four years he was there, he also found the time to write the first grammar of the Aleutian language, which had till then not been written down. It was and was able to translate and publish the gospel, a catechism, and a great many prayers and a book he had written himself the way of the kingdom way to the kingdom of heaven a simple and profound work in which he showed that the path opened by baptism is the only one which leads surely to eternal joy with Christ this book had a wide distribution 47 editions and was translated into several languages arriving one day for the first time On a certain island in the course of his missionary journeys, he was surprised to find the whole population awaiting him on the shore. An old man who was looked on as a shaman because of the healings he had performed had told them a year earlier about the coming of the missionary. Since his baptism 30 years before, this man had been taught all the truths of faith by two angels who were visible to him alone. The two celestial beings had taught him to pray with a pure heart and had given him the power of healing. After ten years of missionary labors, when not a single idolater remained in the region of Unalaska, Father John left and settled at Sitka, then known as New Archangel, in 1836. This was a colonial settlement on the territory of of the warlike Indian tribe, the Tlingists, who, incited to hatred by their shamans, had several times massacred the Russian colonists and had remained inaccessible to every effort at evangelization. Father John 
there and as before immediately began to study the language and customs of the indigenous peoples and discovered that they in fact possessed a rich culture. A smallpox epidemic was at the door of was the door that providence opened up to make them receptive to the word of God. When more than half the population had died of the plague, despite the powerless incantations of the shamans, the local people, seeing that the Russians remain unaffected, began little by little to accept vaccination. The immediate success of the medicine made them gentler and more respectful towards the Russians, and it was with great reverence that they welcomed Father John, watching the services that he celebrated, asking him questions about life after death, and rivaling one another in the receiving him into their houses. They showed him such honor that one day when he was visiting a family, an Indian threw a richly carved box into the fire without hesitation in order to warm the man of God. On his return to Sitka, Father John worked at the building of the Church of St. Michael the Archangel, his future cathedral, and as well as his literary works, his translation, and the notes of his journeys also found the time to work as a cabinet maker and mechanic, and even to make musical instruments. This manual work was not just a personal distraction, but making the missionary approachable to the people, it gave him a power full means of teaching and allowed the local people to acquire human dignity along with their craft. As well as this, one of Father John's first concerns was the founding of schools, furnishing the pupils with bilingual school books in Russian and Tlingit that he had written. The spread of the missionary work meant that it needed to be consolidated by the arrival of new priests and the burdensome building of churches and schools in various parts of the archipelago. It was with this in mind that Father John undertook a journey to Russia in 1838, traveling through the southern hemisphere, arriving at his destination he went while awaiting the session of the Holy Synod of St. Petersburg to Moscow to meet the Holy Metropolitan Philaret, the most outstanding personality in the Russian church at the time, who immediately showed him a warm friendship and said of him that he had personality of an apostle. Father Vyanimov accounts of his journeys and his descriptions of the customs of the inhabitants of Alaska attracted the attention of a very a, a very varied milieu and the Holy Synod greatly impressed decided to elevate him to the dignity of archpriest and to support the mission but he then received the news of his wife's death and under pressure from the metropol from metropolitan philaret very quickly received the monastic habit, his children's education being assumed by the church. In 1840, after a meeting with Tsar Nicholas I, he was consecrated bishop for Kamchatka and Alaska under the name of Innocent, a sign of the continuity of the missionary work of Saint Innocent of Irkutsk. Returning to Sitka after an absence of three years, the new bishop who had brought with him fellow workers and important donations, undertook without delay the construction of churches and schools. He founded a seminary at Sitka and left on a long journey round his immense diocese, beginning with the island of Kodiak, earlier sanctified by St. Herman. He spent three years traveling more than 3,000 miles across the vast and, for the most part, unexplored glaciers of Kamchatka with a single companion in a dog sleigh for, or without a single, with a single companion in a dog sled or even on foot, suffering all sorts of privations, especially the extreme cold. The convoy's progress was often impeded by terrible blizzards and forced the missionaries and their guides to dig themselves a shelter in the snow and wait, sometimes for a week, till the storm ceased. 
The bishop endured all these difficulties with the patience of the apostles in their tribulations, mixing with the natives in their encampments where they lived in tents of birch bark, placing himself at the service of everyone and organizing churches and schools everywhere that he passed. In 1850, the region of Yakutsk was added to his diocese and he received the rank of archbishop with jurisdiction over more than 200,000 souls. He began to learn Yakut language and continued his journeys right to the heart of the Siberian desert. Siberian desert. The first time that he read the gospel in the liturgy in Yakut, the inhabitants were so delighted that they asked permission to add to this date to the calendar of the church's, church's feasts. The apostolic zeal that had earlier been aroused in his heart urged him to visit the remotest regions so that the prophetic words, their sound has gone out into all the lands and their words into the ends of the world should be brought to reality. In 1857, he was present at the General Council of Bishops in St. Petersburg, during the course of which two bishops were designated to assist him in his tasks, one for Yakutsk and the other for Sitka. On his way back, he decided to continue his mission along the Armour River, founding parishes in the most distant parts of Manchuria, and thus opening China to a mission from the north. He stopped in each village to hold services there and sympathize tenderly with the people's misery and their needs on the material level as much on the spiritual level. In 1862, he transferred his seat to a new city, intending to live there permanently, having fallen slight having failing sight through long periods in the snow and being overwhelmed by fatigue, the old man was dreaming of asking the Holy Synod for permission to retire to a monastery and finish his days there, when contrary to all expectations, he was designated in 1868 to succeed Metropolitan Philaret, who had just died primate as primate of the Russian church. During the ten years that crowd his career, the holy missionary gave the Russian church a new momentum, reorganizing the schools and charitable institutions, simplifying the bureaucracy, and above all, organizing the Russian Missionary Society, which had developed greatly at the end of the 19th century. Overcome at last with total blindness and not re having received the Tsar's permission to resign his post, he continued to take an active part in the church administration and celebrated the divine liturgy and the other services from memory. He gave his apostolic soul into the Lord's hands in 1879, a few moments before the celebration of the Easter office. St. Innocent had, during 58 years without respite, been a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Through the prayers of St. Innocent, Metropolitan of Moscow and an Enlightener of Alaska and Siberia. May the Lord God have mercy on us and save us. Amen. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, leave us a message on social media, leave us a note in the comments section. If you'd like to support this ministry, remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Again, God bless you.